Hello everyone, my name is Ali. I'm a postdoc at the Institute of Astrophysics of Paris, working with Sylvia Galli. And today I'm going to present to you a recent work we did in collaboration with Julien Lescourt and uh, at Aachen and his students Sven Günther and Marian Bahrami, as well as with Karima Ambit from the IAP. I'm sure you are, all, you are all aware that we are living in an age of a crisis in cosmology called the Hubble tension, which simply stated is a discrepancy between the inferred value of the Hubble parameter H0 when using early probes of the universe and assuming a cosmological model, compared to late universe probes of the late universe probes that are independent of the cosmological model. And I think it's interesting to look at this kind of plot where you can see how things used to be more in agreement in the past, but a bit boring, while once when data started to become more precise, it uncovered a hidden monster, but then it became more interesting to be uh, around in this era. Also, it shows you how when things are in agreement, but with large error bars, it doesn't necessarily mean that things are actually good. So this trend of having uh, large values of H0 for uh, late universe probes and uh, small values of H0 for early universe probes has appeared not only with the CMB data from Planck, but also with CMB data from outside of Planck or non-CMB data at all, as well as the trend from the late universe side that is led by the Schulz collaboration also showed the same trend uh, from different groups, different experiments. And so the idea here is that given that all these analyses have happened, it is becoming less likely that the reason and or the main cause for this tension is actually systematics or some experimental problems, and that it could be a sign of new physics. And indeed, people started studying and suggesting a lot of models that could potentially reduce this tension. And in a, a recent work uh, back in 2021, uh, uh, paper called H0 Olympics, uh, a group of people looked at around 17 of these models and they assessed them based on some statistical criteria and gave them some ranking with medals depending by, on how much they were able to reduce tension uh, in H0. So given all this, what we wanted to do now is to examine some of these models that have been proposed to solve the tension using particularly data from the South Pole Telescope collaboration which I'm a part of, uh, is temperature polarization cross-correlation data. And we will be comparing the inferred value of H0 from each model with the most recent uh, one given by the Schuh's uh, collaboration, as you can see here with the very precise uh, error bar. And in total, we will be studying 11 uh, models five classical extensions of lambda CDM and three more elaborate models that and some of their extensions. We will be assessing these models and the ability of these models to reduce the tension based on some tension metrics. Some of them are new, we introduced for the first time. And so basically we are updating the Olympics paper, focusing on a new tension metrics and new data. Before starting into the detail, let me briefly uh, mention what is the uh, philosophy behind most of the models that have been proposed to solve the tension. This is the angular size of the sound horizon at recombination given by the ratio of this angular uh, of the sound horizon at recombination divided by the angular diameter distance from us toward the recombination. Now this quantity is extremely precisely measured, which means that any if any uh, mechanism that will lead to an increase in H0 must be compensated by other modifications in this equation in order to make sure that this quantity remains fixed. And so this was the guiding principle that most of the models that have been proposed to solve the tension relied on. Now, concerning our data set, we first, the first class is in the CMB class, which includes SPT, as I mentioned before, but also Planck, uh, sorry, Planck and the Atacama Cosmonic Telescope Act. We also look at BAO data from uh, two surveys, the six degree field galaxy survey and the Sloan Digital Sky Survey up to the R16, which by the way was not included in, in the Olympics paper. And finally, we also look at the Pantheon uh, sample of supernova data. Concerning the models we study, the first we start with the classical extensions of lambda CDM. The first extension is with massive neutrinos, that which is going to be a common extension for all of the uh, subsequent uh, models here. Um, this particular extension is very well constrained by small scale CMB and BAO, and this would be a modification to the late universe part of this equation to compensate the increase in H0. The second model is called the Chevalier Podarsky Lindner, 
a parameterization for dark energy with an equation of state given this form with two free parameters. This is also a late time uh, modification to this equation. And it was very well uh, constrained by combining CMB, large scale CMB data and supernova data. The third extension is by allowing the spatial curvature to vary. This is also a late time uh, modification to this equation. And it is very well constrained by combining CMB and BAO. And finally, we look at the early universe modification, extension of lambda CDM, given by ultra relativistic species or dark radiation, either free streaming or self interacting. And uh, in fact, the self interacting case has been shown to be uh, more promising than the other extensions from this DM in reducing the tension. Now, the more elaborate models we look at, the first one is the varying electron mass. As its name suggests, in this model, the mass of the electron in the early universe is different from the one that we measured here in the lab. This model is motivated by higher dimensional theories such as string theory. And now, when we vary the mass of the electron, you end up with a modification to the properties of the hydrogen atom, which means that we are also varying the time at which hydrogen recombines in the early universe. So when we go back to this equation, basically we are modifying the limits of the integral that appear uh, in this uh, in the angular size of the sun horizon in a way to compensate for the increase in each number. This model is very well constrained by combining CMB and BAO data. And in fact, it was shown to be extremely promising in reducing the tension below the three sigma threshold, given a gold medal in the Olympics paper. The first extension for this model that we introduced for the first time is by allowing the sum of neutrino masses to vary on top of the electron mass to see the uh, resulting degeneracy these two masses have uh, in the problem. The second uh, extension that was previously studied is to allow for the spatial curvature to vary. And the reason for that is that, as you can see from here, when we are uh, varying the redshift of recombination, we are doing it both for the early universe and for the late universe parts of this equation. In order to make sure that by doing so, we do not spoil late universe probes, we needed, well, one would need to, al to add another free parameter, hence the use of omega k. And in fact, this particular extension was also very promising in reducing the tension below the three sigma threshold, even again a gold medal. And the last extension is to combine the previous two to have both the, the sum of neutrinos, masses, and the omega k to vary at the same time as the electron mass. The second elaborate model we look at is the famous early dark energy, which is also motivated by higher dimensional theories that result in the presence of scalar fields around matter radiation equality that alter the expansion of the universe in such a way to compensate for an increase in h naught. So as far as the Hubble tension is concerned, what this model is doing is adding energy content in the early universe to compensate for the increase in h naught, making sure that this quantity remains fixed. But of course, given that you have a scalar field, it means it has its rich perturbative phenomenology associated with it. And it was also shown to be promising in reducing the tension given a, gold, a silver medal. The last elaborate model we look at is called the Myron, which historically is a mass generating mechanism for neutrinos. And that was later developed by the authors to become a particle physics motivated, self-interacting dark radiation model. So unlike in the phenomenological extension to lambda CDM that was shown before, this model is uh, rich in perturbative phenomenology. And as far as the Hubble tension is concerned, again, this model is adding energy content in the early universe in such a way to compensate for the increase in h naught. And this was also shown to be promising in the, in the Olympics paper given a silver medal. Now for our tension metrics, the statistics that we use to assess uh, these models, First, we, we introduce for the first time what is called the marginalized posterior compatibility level, which in simple terms, it is basically a generalization to the Gaussian tension metric that is used in the literature given by this form here. So the advantage of this metric is that it accommodates non-Gaussian posteriors of H0, and so it makes, us, it makes it more trustworthy. Second of all, it is a Bayesian parameter in the sense that it depends on the posteriors, on the, oh, sorry, on prior knowledge, uh, which is kind of a caveat. In addition to the fact that this is only one parameter that is used to assess the tension, but in order to make sure that by solving the Hubble parameter, we do not introduce other tensions, we need to look at other 
uh, matrix, hence the second parameter, which is called the difference of the maximum opposite theory, in which we calculate the best fit chi-squared uh, or the maximum likelihood for a given model with a data set that includes shoes and compare it to that that does not include shoes. And the idea here is to see how much including shoes creates an internal tension for the model. Now, in this case, we are comparing the fit of a given model to the data set as a whole, not just through one particular parameter. And it's a frequentist uh, quantity because it depends on the likelihood alone without any priors. So there is an improvement compared to just using one parameter. However, this quantity does not take into consideration that by allowing for additional parameters of a model, we will be always able to fit a data better than the previous one, which means that there must be a penalty for having additional number of parameters uh, compared to another model. Hence, the third criteria, which is the Akaiki information criterion, in which we compute again the best fit chi-squared, the maximum likelihood, for a given data set that includes shoes and, uh, for a model and compare the same thing, but for lambda CDM, the best model we have so far. So we will be comparing the difference between these two chi-squares, penalized by the fact that this model has additional number of parameters compared to lambda CDM. Uh, these two quantities, along with the Gaussian tension version of the first one, have always been used in the literature. And the last one we introduced for the first time is the same Akaiki information criterion, but without including shoes. And the idea here is we want to see whether the success of the model comes from the model itself, or because of the freedom it has with its new parameters with a shoes like here. Concerning our numerical tools, we use as Boltzmann codes almost everything that is available in the market. So we have class, CAM, and the uh, modified version of uh, class for uh, energy like energy. We use Cobaya to do our NCMC, our Monte Carlo sampling, which has a built-in algorithm, um, built algorithm uh, using the Bobica uh, algorithm to get the best fit chi squared. We also put to test a recently developed uh, emulator by Sven, uh, which I urge you to uh, look at into more details. And for the uh, consequent uh, results that I'm going to show you, it they would correspond to this combination of data sets. So our main result in this work is that none of the models is actually solving the tension in the sense that none of them is predicting a large value of H0 with relatively small error bars. Moreover, the self-interacting dark radiation, the electron varying electron mass, and the Majoran model are no longer potential solutions to the tension. The only surviving cases are the varying electron mass with omega k, varying electron mass with omega k with omega nu, and EDE. And these two cases are actually have the, the, the largest error bars compared to all the other uh, models which means that they are reducing the tension basically because they have much larger error bars. Now concerning the differences in the chi-squares, if we do not include the shoes likelihood, we can see that none of these models is doing much better than lambda CDM. There's a slight preference for EDE compared to lambda CDM, but then we have to penalize this by the presence of additional uh, parameters for these models, and then the delta AIC without shoes fails for all of these models. However, once we include shoes, then the chi-squared skyrockets for all of these models and the delta AIC passes for all of them, even so. But this is not because the models are fitting the data much better, but because lambda CDM has become a much worse fit to the data once we include the shoes likelihood, because the new shoes likelihood is more precise than the previous one. So to summarize, what we did in this work is we looked at some of the previously sub uh, proposed models to reduce the Hubble tension, focusing on data from the South Pole Telescope, both in temperature, polarization, cross-correlation, and the new shoes likelihood, as well as the uh, BAO data from SDS and SDR16. We also introduced new tension metrics that improved our assessment, and we used emulate, a Boltzmann code emulator to uh, speed up our computations. And the conclusion is that the self-interacting dark radiation, the varying electron mass, and the Majoran model are no longer potential solu solutions to the Hubble tension. And in fact, none of the studied models do actually solve the tension. Only some of them just reduce it. And so in the future, we want to reassess these models from a theoretical point of view, make sure that we are capturing all uh, the modeling necessary for them. And we will be constraining them with the upcoming data from SPT and ACT, 
and we will be using um, uh, improved numerical techniques such as the emulator that was mentioned. And uh, in the further future, we would like to forecast uh, constraints on these models by upcoming uh, CMB experiments such as the Simon Observatory and uh, CMB S4. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and I'd be very happy to answer all your questions or comments either in the Q&A or on Slack.